Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Rural Insights Podcasts. Uh, today, uh, I'm really pleased to have a, a co former colleague of mine, or current colleague of mine, uh, Dan Truckee, the head of the, the Bomir Center on uh, Northern Michigan University's campus. Welcome, Dan. Thanks, Dave. It's great to be here. So, Dan, tell us, tell our listeners, first of all, what is the Bomir Center? Well, the Bomir UP Heritage Center, the real idea behind it all, our mission is to celebrate the history and culture of the Upper Peninsula. And so what we do is, well, we do a lot of things to do that. We, one, uh, do a lot of exhibitions, three to, yeah, about three, two or three exhibitions a year, uh, temporary exhibitions on various topics of UP history. Um, but in addition to that, we have a lot of exhibits that are traveling exhibits that have been around the Upper Peninsula, uh, and now many of them are online. Um, we have an active schedule of events that we do out through primarily the academic year, uh, everything from lectures to uh, concerts to uh, uh, film series. To, God, it's, I can't even remember all the things that we've done over the years, uh, programming-wise on campus and beyond. Uh, but I also like to do see ourselves as an advocate for um, the heritage preservation in the Upper Peninsula as well. Um, and then lastly, what we are is we're a laboratory for students. Being here at the university, it's really important that a part of what we are is helping students who want to get experience, hands-on experience in their career goals, um, namely in the museum field or history field, public history, um, but also students have gotten first-hand experience working in promotion and uh, 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 management of cultural events. Um, and so it's, I've had over 70 students work or intern for me in the last 15 years. And that, um, that's that been the most rewarding aspect of it all. So what, what uh, tell us again, so a student that comes in interns, what kind of career path would they want to be following after an internship at the Beaumere Center? Well, it's, it's pretty varied. I mean, a lot of the history students who are coming in and sociology, anthropology students who have had want to work in the museum field. Um, and so for them, you know, usually it entails them going off to graduate school, though not all right away. Uh, some go off and find uh, ent entry level work, but most of them end up back into graduate school at some point in time in museum studies. Um, Several of my students now work in the museum field as mid-level professionals, so I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, uh, others, you know, it's I've had students who were into social media and they became my social media managers and are now working in the social media industry, or the website industry, um, so um, and graphic design as well. So I've had so many students who have done many different things. Um, in fact, found themselves here. One student of mine who she wanted to be a journalist, but she ended up doing promotions for me. Now she ends up doing promotions for companies online all over. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's been a real, for me, an eye-opening experience of just the opportunities that working in this field can open doors for many different kinds of things, just not museums or public history per se. So before I go much further, I, I know who John Bomir is. He was a friend of mine, but why don't you tell everybody who John Bomir is? So why it's named the Bomir Center, who he was? Yeah, that's always a great question. And I love answering it because he was quite the individual. He was a young guy. He came here to Northern in 1949 from Escanaba. He was on a football scholarship, one of the first football scholarships to the university. By his own admission, was not much of a student. Um, didn't really have an idea what he wanted to do. Took some biology classes and became a, a got a degree in botany, um, and uh, went on to med school at the University of uh, at Marquette University, uh, and then eventually his uh, uh, his well doctorate. I guess that's not the right word for it. But he became a doctor, an orthopedic surgeon, working in his own practice, and eventually at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Um, he graduated from Northern in 1953 and he wanted to do something for Northern because he really felt, and I always tell people, he is the epitome of the Northern experience. The young person who comes here doesn't really know 
what they want to be, doesn't Riz ever really distinguish himself in any way, finds themselves here and goes off to have a great career, make a difference in people's lives, and he did. And he wanted to give back something to Northern. And so the idea, he loved is the history and culture of the region. He wanted to do something um, that celebrated that and helped preserve it. And I think with a little bit of um, help from Russ Minyagi, probably more than just a little bit of help, he really helped to find this idea of creating this heritage center. And it was in 2003, you know, the donation. And then we opened the first gallery in 2006. He, uh, he was uh, one of the great NMU advocates and, uh, and had this sharp wit and a wonderful sense of humor. He was just a, a, a very interesting man. He really was a great guy. He was a, he was a wildcat through and through. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, even though he worked at the uh, University of North Dakota for a long time <laughs> as their trainer, um, yeah. you know, he 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 just loved Northern and uh, and he was a wonderful man. I, I loved getting to know him and, and spend the time I did. I Not only I, but my family got to be friends with him. And it just uh, uh, he and my parents both died in the same year. And it was a really tough year for me. Um, oh, that's neat. Because of the. Uh, because of losing all three of them, so. Well, that, that that's good for our listeners to know what a, what an interesting man he was. Uh, born and raised in the UP, and never forgot those roots, even when he left and came back. Mm -hmm. So, tell us, uh, Dan, what what is going on right now at the? What's going on right now, and what can our listeners expect if they come visit the Bomir Center between now and and the end of the year uh, and into next year? What would they see? Well, currently we have an exhibition up through December on uh, the fisheries of the upper Great Lakes and really looking at the history of the fish populations um, and, and the different uses of fisheries, whether it be from the commercial to the recreational and how those affected um, fish populations and, and the, the work being done to preserve the fish populations. And this really comes from looking uh, at our students here at Northern. We have the fisheries department here at Northern. Um, Joe Leonard is uh, in charge of the fisheries program and, um, and starting to look at the work that our students are doing here at Northern, which is something we try to feature in our exhibits from time to time is how these topics connect with work that's being here done at the university. Um, and, uh, and it's important work, everything from protecting lake trout populations to the sturgeon, which are probably the most historical um, fish in the Great Lakes. Uh, and so it's a, a, it's actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I, I didn't have high expectations for it as an exhibit and then people really seem to like it, especially visually. But there's some really powerful material in the exhibit, including these paintings done by Alex Rock, uh, Alexis Rockton, um, which really look at the ecology of uh, the Great Lakes over time. It's uh, it's really, uh, it's been well received and I hope people enjoy it. And besides that, we have two major events coming up. We have one more concert we're putting on this winter or this fall um, uh, and November 2nd, the group Alton from Ish uh, from Ishpeming, I was gonna say Ishpeming, from uh, Ireland is gonna be coming to perform on November 2nd. And then uh, November 4th, we have our annual Sondrager Symposium, which we're really excited about, so. So what what goes on? I, I've I've taken part as a, an audience member, Sondrager. I've presented. Tell our listeners what 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 is the Sondrager Symposium and what will be talked about this year? Yeah, well, I mean, this is our twenty second year, and it really was an, an originally envisioned to be an interdisciplinary conference about the Upper Peninsula, um, and though it has at times been that it ultimately is usually a historical conference about the UP. But when I started managing it about, about four years ago, um, we came to the conclusion that there should be a theme every year for it um, to try to drive the different types of presentations. And uh, this year, the theme is uh, heritage preservation and tourism, looking at the importance of uh, both historic and heritage preservation, but uh, also the role they play in developing tourism in the UP via, um, you know, co people coming to the UP to see the history beyond just the leaves and the natural wonder that's up here. And so this conference uh, will be featuring a day of presentations by various people, both from the UP and beyond the UP, about many different topics, uh, 
everything from uh, a survey of charcoal kilns and history of charcoal kilns in, in the UP to uh, our keynote, which is a gentleman named Donovan Rukema from uh, a company called Place Economics in Washington, D.C. is going to be talking just about this idea of heritage preservation and tourism, uh, which is his business. It's what he does. Um, and the importance to communities. Uh, I see it really as something for the UP that's very important as us, um, the challenge of preserving our historic sites and, and making sure people know about them so they can come and see them and appreciate the history of the region. And so the sessions are gonna be about many different things. I, one of my favorites is gonna be about UN Trout Creek basketball, which you may wonder why, what does that have to do with it? And the reason why is there's a gentleman named Gary Flores who was on the state championship team in 1972 who bought the old gym, uh, a gym I played in high school, um, not for you, but for one of their competitors. And he's preserved it and, and is turning it into a, uh, a museum that was not really public yet. He's, he's saving it because it was such an important part of this small community's history. And uh, a friend of mine, Kristen Ogerman, has been making a documentary about the, the basketball program at the school. And so they're both coming to talk about these projects. I'm really excited about them. So uh, again, uh, there's an attachment to the Sondrager Symposium. Dr. Sondrager was a professor at Northern uh, in military history, who I took a class from. And his wife, Marion Sondrager, uh, was an community activist and leader, and uh, they, they funded this, uh, this, uh, this symposium. Uh, so people can go to all of these for free, right? Yeah, this event is completely free. Um, it'll be at the Northern Center on November 4th, all day long from like eight to five. Okay. Uh, and we'll even have a lunch, a sandwich lunch that people can enjoy. Um, it'll also be online. We'll be streaming it so people can watch it uh, from anywhere. Which is the amazing thing yeah. that people in, uh, well, probably not Russia anymore, but in China, even could uh, get on and watch it, hopefully. Um, and, and we we save them all, you know, so that you can go back and watch ones from past years. And, uh, uh, it's, it's a really great resource looking at the Upper Peninsula and the Upper Great Lakes. So it's uh, all of all the things you mentioned, are they open to the public and free? Mm -hmm. Come to the exhibits for free. Oh, yeah. Take their yeah, children, pop in to learn Everything about history of the UP, and they can just come in and wander around, right? Yeah, other than our concerts, all of our activities are free to the public. I think this is something, I don't, Dave, I don't know if you remember this or from your time at, uh, of course, still at the university, but there's still this idea sometimes for, for people in the community, they're not welcome here. That, you know, I, I'm not allowed to go to that. And nothing could be further than truth. The truth we want the public to come. We want them to be on campus and doing things and taking advantage of the cultural events we have. It's one of the great uh, benefits of having a university is it does create a level of cultural activity that a, a city the size of Marquette, even though it has a lot of things, wouldn't have. I and I think serving the entire Upper Peninsula, we see that really. That's a very important role for us is that we do serve the UP and. Um, and, and so we really want people to come. And, and that's part of the reason we make it free. I mean, it's, it's just a university mandate in some ways, but also just to make it accessible to anyone to be able to come. So you've been at Northern now, what, 15 years at the Bowmeyer Center? Yeah. So in those 15 years, do you have one thing that stands out in your mind as your favorite or the most fun or just <laughs> jumps out in your head? Well, David, I... I it, it, I have to thank you for this, um, and, and it is the opening of this this facility back in 2016. I remember when we first started talking about the idea of putting the Bomir Center in this building, and I was like, I, I don't see it. I don't. That's not going to work. And then I came over here and started poking around. I'm like, yeah, that would work. And you, you and, and Martha really pushed this idea, and and. I think a lot of people sh scratch their heads about it, but now that we're here, I think people are like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's a great location on campus. Um, but our opening event, you know, you talk about Dr. Bumir, this was literally, we opened this um, 
this facility, the museum, less than five days after my mom passed away. Oh, it was wow. a really tough time for me to be opening a new museum. <laughs> um, but the thing about it was that at the opening, because my mom's funeral was the next day, not only was my father here, but all my brothers and sisters were here. And, um, and Dr. Bomi was here and the whole university community. And for me, you know, the, the, the nine years here leading up to that point and everything afterwards, that was really an important moment for me. Um, I wasn't even that particularly happy with the exhibit I created because I was in such a bad space that it didn't turn out the way I wanted. Right after that, we did the um, the Ghost Towns exhibit, and that was a hugely popular exhibition. I remember that, I think, yeah. I think that that, I, I, part of the reason I did that is like, we need to up the ante here. We're in this new facility. We need to do better. And so I think being in this facility really changed things um, and, and, and got us to, to really raise the bar for the quality of the exhibitions we do and how we do them. Um, and and thinking about what we do. So yeah, these are all, those are really big highlights for me. Um, and uh, then there's just so many, they're so numerous. I, I have had so many great experiences at Northern, I can't describe. I mean, I had the honor of running the concert series as well as in additional duties. And just the people I met from all over the world through that program um, was just a truly special experience that, um, we're still keeping going in, a, in a, a bit, but it's nothing like it was back in the day, but it's, th that was really important. And I was able to combine what the Beaumere Center does with the NMU concert series. And, and it created certain synergies that um, really raised the profile for the center, which was really important for a long time to do. It's still important to do, but, you know, it took a long time for us to get on a map, you know, <laughs> and so still working on it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry to me. No, no, no. That's I was finished. Well, that was great. I, I, it's very interesting. Yeah, I, if somebody wants to find out more, they just go to nmu.edu slash Bomir Center. Bomir is all you need, and then it'll just Bomir. Okay. Yeah, just Bomir, and then it'll it'll bring you to our website. You bet. Okay. And if they come on campus, can you describe for them where it is? Yeah, actually, it's easy to find. Uh, the parking is the hard part. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you come up 7th Street from downtown Marquette, right after you pass the entry sign to the university, we're the first building on the right. And the uh, you'll see the brick wall and the uh, lobby uh, entrance to the Bomir Center right there. There's usually an exhibition uh, banner up on our, our wall outside. Um, there is a couple parking spots across the street in the parking lot designated for us, but if those are if those are taken, um, it's always best to go over to the Northern Center and pay, or, or not even pay, just park, and you have some well, a grace period to be able to come over and see what we have going on. So, all right. Well, Dan, I want to thank you on behalf of everybody in UP for what you've done and given to the Up Peninsula and our our heritage. Uh, you've been a great leader in this and all for the great things you did at the NMU Bomir Center. So thank you not only for joining us today, but thank you for the commitment you've made to this, this great culture that we all live in and the heritage that we have. So thank you, Dan, and we appreciate you, it. And, and I know everyone will join this. I appreciate it. Have a good day, everyone.